Hey guys, what's new with you? I'm here to talk about something today that's distressing me. I've been watching a little bit of the news about the average savings given the last year and people who are in the baby boomer generation. That's 62 million boomers. What's a boomer? That's some of those kids who were born after the war um, when all the GIs got back and you know, got to make in love with their honeys and we had babies all over the place. And there was a generation, a big generation of that. What's really become interesting now is we have a generation of 62 million millennials. That's another generation we have a name for. They, they came behind us. That's going to be paying for all of us old folks to take care of us. Uh, except for 52% of those millennials are living at home. Now, that doesn't sound so bad, except the next problem is, um, and I've been studying this for a few years, because I've been selling tiny houses. Well, I was. I'm not doing it now. I'm not selling people any tiny houses, so we don't get into that part. And comments are supposed to appear. I'm not getting any, and I don't know if anybody's even out there, but we've been having a little issue with uh, Facebook's systems, I guess. So, I want to have a shirt on today, <clears throat> so maybe I won't be um, censored for that. Criticized. Attacked, whatever. Um, my, my point today is going to address something that's really critical, and I've been watching this. At 55 years old, the average person in the United States has about $25,000 in the bank in total savings, net worth, not counting what they still owe. Well, why is that a problem? Well, by 62, it appears the average American now has about $2,000 in the bank. Savings. Now, some have some 401ks and some have some money that's in retirement funds that they can't exactly get to. But the bulk of the average American's wealth from 55 to 62 years old is in their house. That sounds great. You got a good house. It's worth a million and a half dollars and it's taxing the crap out of you to keep it. And the maintenance is hell and getting anything done to it is hard. Heating it and cooling it is bad. But you know, like in Unluling, Texas, for example, you're not going to believe this. Because they have a monopoly on the electric in that town, this town, the one I'm adjoining, you can't go get electricity from anybody else. They get it from the river authority, and then they charge us to deliver it from the authority to our houses. It's been going up sometimes. The delivery can cost you $100 a month to get $100 worth of electricity. Yikes, that's $200 for $100 worth of electricity. Now, the problem with this is that for a person who's older, who's on a fixed income, who's living in a big house instead of a small house. Hey, Thomas, you need to come down here. <laughs> I don't know why that totally just clear it out. I'm wanting to put it in good hands to go to good causes and do good things. Anyway, my point is this. For example, if your savings was a bunch of lumber stacked up real nice and neat in a pile, not getting all messy, dirty, and warped out and bugged out, it went up 500% in value this year. That's good for the guy that's got all that lumber stacked up in his barn. But the other guy out there who wants to build something, now that's not so good. He has to go to Home Depot now and pay a dollar a square foot for crap. Speed growing wood. Now it's like going out there and, and buying junk food. Because it's, it's basically bug food waiting to be eaten. Soft cellulose tissue, not a lot of hard tissue, not a lot of structural value. It bends, breaks, and... And you get it at 19% moisture content, and by the time it dries out, it's going down to 6 or 5. So it's going to shrink another 10%. Why is this important to you? Do you want to build a house? Hmm. Too bad. $50 a sheet for plywood. Plywood! Not good, great, wonderful, three-quarter inch thick plywood. Although right now it's not much difference, oddly enough. Half-inch CDX half-inch plywood, you're talking almost $50 a sheet. Since Biden got elected, it's only gone up $10 a sheet. Isn't that great? Imagine after a month. Holy cow. And a stud. Oh, we've been anticipating it, in case you hadn't noticed. Everybody kind of figured we are going to lose this race. And since the people that wanted it to happen this way, well, it's happening. That's my coffee. I was born in Germany. If you want to keep your coffee hot or your beer cold, and I don't drink beer, you have a lid on it. 
Isn't that cool? Recycle, salvage. How do you salvage from drinking alcohol to drinking coffee for your habit? I didn't have a habit of drinking alcohol, but somebody made enough bugs out there to leave a few for me. Moon Azabi, hey, hello. Montreal, hey, cool, cool. I'm so glad to see people from other countries looking in, because frankly, if I was looking in from the outside right now, I'd be going, what the hell's going on over there? I was born in Germany, and, and people don't understand in America, they are though, um, that, uh, well, it's different in America. But if you're overseas and you're looking at it from outside, looking inside our media bubble, it's even more different because people don't understand it. We don't see the same inside our media bubble as you see from the outside. Everybody's being told a story by their media, and everybody who's in charge of the media, the editors and the people that own the magazines and the newspapers and stuff, they're affecting how each of us perceive it. Now, and, and, and frankly, right now, we have a big problem. So the reason I'm writing this book and almost everything you're seeing is part of it. Yeah. You're part of my book. Isn't that cool? I've inducted you all. Um, we call that the draft. Or another way is, is, is um, I ask kids all the time, do you know that you're subject to, to being... Um, Taken into the military for service if they need to. They don't even have any idea in this country anymore. Geraldine Fultz, oh my goodness. From Round Top, absolutely. One of my favorite houses, Dorothy, lives over there. And they help take care of her for me. Dorothy's a beautiful house. People don't understand there's energy in houses. That's a couple. Design a... Oh my goodness. Respect. Design a ship, a boat. A masterpiece on the water. That's what they live most of the year. When they come back to the land, they live in a tiny house. When they're on the water, they live in and take care of and beyond my ability to understand, navigate and control a giant yacht that is literally um, astonishing. Uh, kudos. Um, the world is changing right now, everybody. It used to be you'd get on that kind of thing and just roll off and, and, and land anywhere and wander all around and enjoy everything without a mask on. <laughs> and free. Free to just wander back on and go back anywhere else and land and wander off again and not go through two weeks of quarantine. Well, why would you have to go through quarantine? So these are all issues right now. What I'm address addressing today, I'm trying to focus on, you know, I'm, I'm not very good at focusing. Um, oh, cool, Gail. You know what? If you grew up in a house like that, you probably got a real good sense of values. Um, <laughs> waves of heat. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go outside, guys. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and this is what I'm going to be wearing. It's a little chilly. I got a little bit of goosebumps, but it's going to warm up shortly. I mean, warm up is in 80 degrees. I like 80 degrees, guys. I really appreciate it up north. It's beautiful up north in the summertime. Not now. And you know, you can see nothing. Did you know that... To, I think some people are missing something, by the way. Did you know at one time Hudson Bay was sort of like the North Pole? But at a time when there was a glacier up there, the glacier up there was um, so thick that it would take 3,000 feet of snow, not melting off, to create that glacier. That sounds insane. 3,000 feet of snow. That's what it was on top of New York City at one time. And the Great Lakes, the reason they're so big is because those are the dents in the ground from all that pushing down on there making a giant dent. And then flushing out when it all melted and the ice dams broke and it went down the Mississippi and caused some great destruction. A long time ago. <sighs> Retirement. Retirement's only good if you're not in the path of that water or sitting underneath 3,000 feet of snow or a whole bunch of things about retirement. you got to be in the right place to live. Living, retirement requires you to continue living, which requires you to continue being in good health and not being overcome by, say, the uh, 2.5 p.m. particulates in the air, which you can go on windy.com and see where they're coming down at from the volcanoes. It's the fine particulates out of the volcanoes. And as well as you get particulates like that coming out of cities and stuff, but not usually the 2.5 levels of carcinogenic stuff. And so we studied it a lot. And we knew that 
we have ample amounts of evidence to show that the, uh, you know, what you shouldn't have, what you should have, let's say. Now, there's a problem. I'd like you to look at that. Because all this retirement savings, you know, that whole $2,000 that the average 62-year-old has in the bank saved up for retirement, that might not last too long. Um, now, mind you, a lot of the statistics I was using is I was trying to get people to buy into tiny houses and learn how to build out of salvage and how to cut back on your expenses, to reduce your electric, to go ahead and, hey, cool, lunchtime. Oh, man, did I actually time it right for a change? Hmm. Thank you, Betty, for letting me know. I appreciate it. Um, the idea behind this is all these people that are working, they got jobs. If you don't have money in the bank for retirement, like most people, 55 years old, your average is 25000 in the bank saved up, and that includes everything you can access. Now, if you paid off your debt, squat. Why? Because we all have bank loans for cars, houses, <sighs> credit cards, um, convenience stuff. Did we just go to, go to a store and buy something on a credit card and don't think twice about it. Now, debit cards have taken over, and debit cards are better because then you got to have the money in the bank to spend it. So guess what? People's credit's not doing so good right now. You're not going to borrow like you used to. You can't get easy credit like you used to. And I know this. I used to have literally a drawer I'd pull out. And I had 40 credit cards in there. I had $100,000 of credit cards. Cash that I got to pull out for 0% interest. And it, so it came due. I would move it to another credit card. And another credit card. And another credit card. And roll and that allowed you at zero percent interest to have a hundred thousand dollars borrowed. And what can you make on a hundred thousand dollars? Don't just spend it wasted. You take it and you invest it and you make stuff out of it. You start businesses that way. You finance a small business with your credit cards in the old days. Now you can still do that, mind you. Um, Five thousand, ten thousand dollar credit line, and coming over here get some of my materials for zero percent interest. Go build a house. Use your credit line to get the maybe a little bit of wiring, your your screws, your nails. I don't supply two by fours, two by sixes. I don't supply uh, house wrap, insulation. So you might spend a few thousand to make a house. You might sell the house for forty thousand dollars. Take the thirty thousand dollars profit in your, for your labors and come back over and pay me back my ten thousand. You might have my materials and get more. Build another one. Make some millions off my millions of materials sitting there right now. Because I'm going to go rot if, if I don't do anything with them. And I'm not going to build another 400 houses. And yeah, I do have 400 houses in stock. One more. So the idea behind this is now, how do I go ahead and figure out how to teach everybody who's going to figure out as they hit the wall? Boom. Oh, wait. My kids going to... Oh, wait a second. My kids aren't going to save me. They're, they're living with me. Oh, shit. I'm supporting them still. Oh, darn. That's why I don't have any money in the bank. Oh, darn. Jeez, we got a problem, guys. So, retirement, what are you going to do? You're going to get a smaller house, or you're going to have a bunch of people move in with you and help pay the bills. By the way, that might not work so good. Unless everybody's got a job. Otherwise, ah! Uh, Arado, Arado, I'm sorry, and it's a good point. What size of lot would I recommend? Well, how many people are you going to have to live with you? Because here's some issues you got to contend with. You can put 10 houses, tiny houses, on an acre comfortably. Have a bigger house for everybody to eat at, and they have master suites. You might have, say, a study or a library or a, uh, a hobby room, exercise house. These are all just tiny houses that everybody can share. Um, you might have your own master suite. Um, the idea is if you do that now, a 4,000 square foot house, well, who wants to have all 10 people living in a 4,000 square foot house? Well, maybe you do. I'm not that sociable. Especially four generations. They used to work. Grandpa go, jump! And everybody go, what? After they jumped. Now, Grandpa goes, jump! And everybody goes, what's wrong, Grandma? He got gas? Uh, no, he wants you to jump. Why? Because it, it doesn't matter. He's telling you to jump for a reason. If you jump, you might just miss getting zapped by electric. Who knows? Jump! Because I'm not a grandpa, so it doesn't bother me. I got nobody to tell to jump. My son's passed. So instead, I'm yelling, jump! Into a little box, about this big screen. Why? 
if you're going to have five or ten people and you want to jump, where are you going to jump to? Don't be buying one or two acres. Buy ten. Split it up with the people share it. Because you're going to need some growing space. I am highly recommend you have two, three acres to grow on. You're going to need some space for green trees, you know, like fruit trees and stuff like that. They don't just all grow on top of each other. They need some space. You need water. So you're going to have to try to find a pond. If you don't have a pond, you have to make a pond. And if that's assuming you can buy land, they're going to let you make a pond. Collect your rainwater. You know, that's illegal in some states. You know, they're out there west. They're going to make it illegal to collect water. In fact, they're going to try to make it illegal to dig holes in Texas. Dig holes in Texas. Dig holes is, I'm telling you, dig holes in Texas. I'm not just repeating myself. Why you can't? Collect the water. Now, chem trail water, not so good. If you can find somebody that's got a spring, got some water on it, got not running water, running water, a spring running through it, or a river water like that has some issues. Amongst other things, it's regulated. Hey, Ron, glad to have you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Share, because right now I'm getting kind of slammed on the censoring thing and the shadow banning. And one of my favorite heroes, Mike Rowe, got kicked off of Facebook with his show with two and a half million followers. All good guy stuff. All wonderful stuff. Inspiring stuff. <sighs> What's the world coming to? I don't know what he did to upset anybody over there on Facebook. Because they're all such wonderful people. And I love my personal censors that watch over me and know that I am not for real. I am totally a writer in a wonderland of fantasy called Salvage, Texas. It doesn't exist on the map. Therefore, I am absolutely... <coughs> How would you put it? Not worth censoring. How's that? I like it. I like it. So just leave me alone and go bother other people. I'm just here making a fool of myself. At least that's what I'm told by some of the trolls. And I'm okay with that. Aren't you? Just let me keep talking about this book about Wibbery and Wub. That world union of beings that thinks that we could maybe, just maybe in the future in a fantasy world. Throw a few monkey wrenches into those well-oiled gears in Wall Street and who knows? Big Pharma. Who knows? Human trafficking industry, which seems to be doing very well under certain administrations and not so well under others. Killing babies. You know, if more of us were able to Get those babies and raise them. And give them a good life. Y'all wouldn't need to kill them all off. We'll help. I'm not alone. Just do me the courtesy of honoring the baby while it's in your womb. Don't do crack. Don't smoke cigarettes the whole time. Don't drink alcohol the whole time. Don't beat that baby up before it's born. Thank you. Retirement, what is that now? Let's think about that again. Perhaps there is no retirement. Perhaps life is real full-time. Once you're here, you're here for the good thing all the way. Perhaps you don't get to sit on your ass and get old, get fat, get worthless, and expect somebody to take care of your ass. Whoa. Am I getting into the tough part of retirement here, guys? Retirement can be a homelessness sitting on the side of a curb. Wondering if you're going to eat today. Digging in a dumpster. Thrilled to find expired eggs. Hamburger still in its wrapper. Vegetables with bruises, but otherwise quite edible been there done that that's not retirement guys one of the nicest guys I ever met in my life sporting a nice look he was a psychoanalyst I met him in Las Vegas I was dead broke at the point of living on dumpsters. And I'm in this guy and he has a sports jacket on and he, he befriended me for some reason. He started talking to me. He showed me how to go out there and take a coupon book in Vegas for $10 of 
buy five dollars, buy four dollars in nickels, we give you five dollars. Buy nine dollars in dimes, we give you ten dollars. It was tourist traps in the old days, 1981, 82. I graduated college, couldn't get a, you know, couldn't get a job. I was too smart. I also lived in a school bus. That made me a transient. That made me a, a homeless person. Technically, my address was General Delivery, Las Vegas Post Office. I parked my bus in the parking lots behind the casinos, usually for up to 30 days before they kicked me out. My school bus was still orange at the time. Not the prettiest thing. But anyway, um, retirement wasn't on my mind in those days. I kind of retired. I got my college degree, and I went off to write my great American novel in a school bus, like the Partridge family or something was going to happen to me and it'd be all wonderful and it wasn't. And that was the old days. Go try to park a school bus that's expired tags, no insurance, no inspection sticker. Go park one of those in Las Vegas in this day and age and see how long you last. See that thing impounded. In fact, believe it or not, I parked underneath the expressway downtown Las Vegas. Take the exit ramp. Before they put downtown Las Vegas on the map to speak of, um, it was that that time it was kind of falling down. It was kind of dilapidated, and you know, there weren't many homeless, comparatively speaking. But even back then, there wasn't no, <laughs> no mercy in Las Vegas. Basically, they figure you came there, you gambled, you lost, you're a loser. I got nothing to help you with. Now, retirement. Why did I bring this up? You go to a pawn shop, retire some of Retirement means getting rid of some of your valuables. Well, go to a pawn shop, retire. Bullshit. They're not going to give you anything. Nothing. The big problem we're facing right now is that everybody thinks they got all these really good assets. Those collections? Yeah, refirement. That's right. Get fired up. Get young again. Fire up your passion. Find out what it is you always wanted to do and do that. Why? That's not work. On top of that, downsize. Get rid of the garbage. Why are you supporting that museum? Anybody coming to your museum paying you to look at all your crap? So you keep dusting it off and organizing it and making it all look nice and neat for what? When are you expecting the big audience? When are you expecting the paparazzi? Maybe you're looking for... Uh, What's that one they do? The guys, oh, wait a second, they're shutting that down. That's right, the guys are going out there buying junk from everybody. I think they're shutting that down. You get the point. Now, I speak from the point where I got more sh stuff. Hmm. I don't want to say that other word. I got more stuff put away than most people ever dream of, and certainly more than I ever dreamed of. Okay, now what we're going to do is try to go ahead and share it. I think the time's come. Why? Because all those people out there yeah they don't have anything safe Ron yeah there is a, some some of the two, tiny house tutorials I did are still online um, the YouTube channel tiny Texas houses I think um, I still have some of those out there on the Brad Cattell channel well, there's some other things out there to make sure everybody thinks I'm a crazy loon and doesn't pay any serious attention to me you can ignore those or you can understand I don't have any holes in me. Look at that. I've survived all this time. I'm still on this YouTube. I'm on platforms. Why? Because I'm crazy. Thank you, Betty. That's right. Just hit pause. Isn't that great? I tell people all the time, don't worry. I know these are long. You can't watch them all in one shot. But yeah, thank you for coming back, Betty, and watching it later. Um, what I was trying to get to on this whole thing is, is I'm watching and looking on the retirement game. If you're about time, figure it out. Now, maybe. Years ago, they said, oh, when I retire, I'm going to get hold of you. You can build my tiny house. Guess what? too late. You're going to have to do it yourself. You're going to have to get some kids locally to do it. That's what we're going to. <sighs> yes, thank you, Betty. I really appreciate you, too. The whole idea behind this is we take all these materials and we get the young kids that still got good backs and can do things for you. They can all it up. And then you can go inside. Inside the house and finish it out. You can go outside and finish it out. It's all within your reach. You can reach up there and put up the nails. You can put up the siding. You can put up the trim. There's a lot of things that you can be taught to do, and it's really pretty simple. If there's a group place to do it at, Pure Salvage Outpost, we can go out there and train, and we're going to build yours on your site, or we're going to build it over here and take pieces over to your site. 
and these kids are going to help you, and you can pay some of the kids to help you, and that way your money can go to a common, a community training center, a community building center, a community where we go down there and tear down these old buildings, these old houses, and I mean, I'm looking at one community to go talk about trying to maybe help them out, and they're sitting there on a bazillion bricks on these old mills. And all the lumber and all the stuff that's in that town, there's a treasure worth more than probably half the people in the town are worth, net worth. Especially when you find out the average net worth, including a house, of a 62-year-old in the United States. It sounds like a lot of money. It's $229,000. Now, wait a second. Take away the house. Ding! What do they got? Nothing! $2,000 in the bank, debt, that's average. And if you try to sell your houses all at once, guys, guess what? Those millennials that are supposed to come along and buy them behind you, where are they at? Uh-oh. They're living with you. How are they going to buy your house? Don't they need a job? Don't they need a... Yeah. Oh, no, we're giving money away for nothing. They can go buy a house without any credit, without anything, anything right now. Why? Because we're trying to do everything we can do to prop up the market just like we did when I was younger and the market went boom. So, if you can sell right now for one of these extremely expensive values because everybody's going to be selling because houses are going up in value. Why? Because when you have to pay eight fifty to $11 for a stud, you think, well, God, I'm going to buy a house while I can. Well, it's made out of shit, sheetrock which is plaster between paper that's going to fall apart. It's made out of vinyl. It's made out of plastics. It's made out of a bunch of junk. Anything you buy that was built within the last 30 to 40 years, it is not going to be here in 30 to 40 years unless you spent a ton of money, more than it costs you, to fix it up and keep repairing the thing because the roof is not made to last. None of it's made to last. That's right. So all those people sitting in those big houses by themselves with three or four empty bedrooms paying electric, paying taxes, wondering how they're going to survive. It's simple. You're not. Not unless you want to have a whole bunch of not-so-nice family moving in as roommates. Guess what? Roommates, for the most part, suck. Because it's not just the roommate, it's who the roommate's friends. Are they honest? Are they drinking? Are they drugging? Are they there when you're not there? Are they there when you are there? Do you have a lock on your bedroom door? Do you have a lock on the pantry? <sighs> Do they lock the front door when they leave like they're supposed to? Do they clean the bathroom? Do they buy groceries like they're supposed to? If I'm speaking to any of you, retirement is supposed to be something you enjoy. Getting younger, getting stronger, getting better. Getting a new passion. Fire in your belly. Not more belly. More fire. So, this is my show today. Yeah, I'm kind of doing a daily show. I'm working on developing this character of Darby for the purposes of getting a book out that includes all of you that are involved in watching it, participating in it, getting pieces of materials, houses, and building a community so that this book will be published sometime when I'm 90 years old. Because <sighs> I got so much crap I'm doing right now. And I need to get back outside and enjoy this beautiful sunshine, get it on my skin, tan this chin that hadn't seen the sun in a bit. Jeez, a month, two months? How long has it been since I did that? Think young kids. Please. The retirement thing, blow it off. From what I tell right now, when I see all the statistics, all the numbers, everybody failed miserably to plan for retirement in this environment. Food, shelter, snow. You think you got problems right now? Wait, the next storm's still on the West Coast. I haven't got here yet. Not that you didn't have fair warning. Not that there were some of us out there saying, hey, it's going to get cold. Don't look at Uncle Gore and believe it's going to get all hot. And you ain't going to see no snow for the rest of your life. And your baby's never going to throw a snowball. And you'll never know what a snowman is. Uh-huh. I don't ever want to throw a snowball down here in Salvage, Texas. If I can help it. If I do, I want to throw it for one day and watch it melt as it hits the ground. Yeah. Now, my bro, David, 
He lives in Michigan. He loves Michigan. He's probably out there doing snow angels right now. Playing golf with his fluorescent orange balls. <laughs> and 200 and what? 50, David? If you're out there, David. Um, he, he wears his uh, winter insulation all the time. Year round. And uh, now I hear tell he promised he's going to lose some weight. And he's going to lose... I got to finish a house, four houses, in the time it takes him to lose 50 pounds. Retirement. What are you doing when retirement? You're going to thin down, slim down, downsize. Not just your house, your body. Otherwise, your hips and your ankles and your back aren't going to hold out, guys. Retirement. Why don't you retire some weight? Why don't you retire some fat? Why don't you retire some attitude about, I'm old, I can get out of shape. Well, guess what? Maybe you can't. Maybe you better stay in shape. Maybe shit might hit the fan. It might turn out different than your plan. Got it? Enjoy your retirement, guys. In the meantime, if you're not going to get there right away, stay in touch. I'm going to be talking about more ways that you, with your wisdom, with your experience, can contribute to our society. Suppose you do that instead of just retire and live off of the society that obviously has got some dysfunctional issues, particularly at the top. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I want to pay for what a senile old man might do at 80 years old if somebody just gave him a pen and a pile of things to sign and said, go for it, dude. Yeah, and he's going, ah, and this one is for... Uh, uh, taking away everybody's rights. Oh, oh yeah, let's take. And this one's for uh, 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 uh. Don't worry. They put it here. I'm supposed to sign it. That's in the world of Darby. So anyway, you know that ain't in the real world, right? No, that's not happening in the real world. In the real world, we got Cammy over there making sure he signs in the right place. That's for the moment. You know something, unfortunately, tragic in the book of Wibblery and Wub. One of the chapters that was sent back to me from the future, when it's published, I I'm sorry to say this. In the book of Wibblery and Wub, about this time, and it's historical, literature is, it tells a story of the past. But along comes a spider. In that tradition of the 20s, the presidents that get assassinated. Unfortunately, I guess perhaps it was planned. If Trump had been reelected, he'd doomed to be killed. Just like Kennedy, Lincoln, and others. But instead, it appears like somebody else volunteered to step into that seat with somebody right behind him. In the book of Wibbledy and Wub, there was this harlot behind him that was going to take over and solidify all those things that he signed in mindlessness. But when you bid on a presidency, Pay a lot of money to buy a presidency so your railroad can keep pumping all that tar sand through a railroad pipeline instead of a land pipeline. Now you just might donate $40 million to a party for that, wouldn't you, Warren? In order to keep that train making that profit because you'd lose billions otherwise in this imaginary world of cause some people to bat, bid on a couple of others. Now China, well, in the story as it goes, they end up getting in trouble. But then, it's just a story. Y'all have a great day. And plan your retirement better, please. Shed some stuff. Enlighten yourself. Lighten your load.
night in your debt. You can't stuff all that stuff in your back seat, in your truck, in your car. Well, then you better thin down because what happens if you have to move out of your museum? Who's going to buy all that crap if everybody's trying to sell crap at the same time? Where are you going to put all that crap? Those damn Beanie Baby collections. I tell you what, they're the hardest thing to go ahead and dump in a hurry, aren't they? Yeah, retirement. Okay, guys. I'm going to have my last sip of coffee. I'm on my way out. You should be too. Have a great day.